In this question, a metallic rod of mass m and length l, thick line in the figure below, can slide without friction on two perpendicular wires, thin lines in the figure. Entire arrangement is located in the horizontal plane. And this is important. Entire arrangement is in horizontal plane. A constant magnetic field of magnitude B exists perpendicular to this plane in the downward direction. The wire have a negligible resistance compared to the rod whose resistance is capital R. Instead, the rod is along one of the wires so that one end of it is at a junction of two wires. Okay, like this. The rod is given an initial angular speed omega such that it slides with two ends always in contact with the two wires and just come to rest in an aligned position with the other wire like this. Determine omega. We have to find the initial angular speed. We have to neglect the self inductance of the system. That means the flux associated with this loop during the motion is only due to this external field. And the current flowing in this loop is not creating any flux. We have to assume that. Okay. So let us make the diagram for some intermediate situation like this. Okay. And we have to find the current in this rod and EMF. First, we have to find the EMF and then we will find the current. So let us see how to proceed. So suppose this is the intermediate uh, position. Okay, so on this intermediate position, suppose this is the rod, rod is something like this. Okay, so this is the rod. And what will happen is initially and there is no area associated with this loop. Now area is increasing. That means the inward flux, the flux going into the plane is increasing. And according to Lenz law, the EMF will be induced in such a way that it will oppose the change in flux. So since the loop is completed, so EMF induced will flow a current in this loop and current will be flown anti-clockwise sense in the anti-clockwise sense so that it can create its own flux uh, in the, uh, since this B is in the inward direction, so it can create the flux in the outward direction, okay? So current will be like this. So initially the current will be something like this. The current is anti-clockwise. And what is happening here is when current is flowing in this loop, so heat is generated in the resistance. We have resistance, this resistance is R, okay. So this is the R resistance here. And let me highlight this also. This is kept in horizontal plane. So there is no MG and any other force like that, okay. So this current is flowing and due to that current, heat is generated and heat is generated at the cost of loss in kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is decreasing. Kinetic energy of this rod is decreasing and heat is, heat is produced in this resistance. So we have to equate the rate of heat generation is equal to rate of heat loss. Okay, I can calculate I square into R and I square into R will be the rate of heat generation. And that rate of heat generation will be equal to the rate of loss in kinetic energy of this rod. Okay because there is no potential energy associated. This is in horizontal plane completely. So for that, we have to find the EMF induced in the rod. And from there, we can find the current in this uh, loop, okay? So to find EMF induced, there can be many ways to do it. And uh, I have uploaded a video earlier also in which I have used, I think, three methods to find the EMF induced. So I will give the link of that in the description. Uh, now I'm going to take one of those methods <coughs> to find the EMF. Okay, so how to find the EMF? I will take uh, this method, method of uh, change in flux, the rate of change in flux. Okay, so this is a case of motional EMF also. So you can do that. Uh, I will share the link. Okay, so the EMF induced can be written as simply d phi by dt. And since magnetic field is not changing with time, so it is simply b dA by dt. And what is this dA by dt? I can take this as x and let's say this is y and how the endpoints are moving. So endpoints are moving like this. This endpoint is moving with some velocity like this and this endpoint will be along this wire. Okay, something like this. And uh, somewhere here is the instantaneous center of rotation. Okay, so I will use that concept instantaneous center of rotation. The rod is rotating something like this. Let's say the angular velocity at this uh, general instant, I'm taking this as omega. Okay, so this is the angular velocity of the rod. Okay, so let's find the EMF induced. So EMF induced is the magnetic field multiplied by this dA by dt, the rate of change in area. And in fact, initially the current is like, uh, this is anti-clockwise current, but you can see initially the area associated was zero. Now there is some area. Now finally area is zero again. Okay, so area is uh, changing from zero to zero. 
that means initial the area will increase and then further area will decrease and when area is increasing so current is like this so emf induced is such a way that current is anti clockwise when it start decreasing area will also start decreasing so when area start decreasing so again it will oppose that and it will oppose that so it, the current will be in the clockwise sense that okay so this is the emf and emf we have to find this da by dt and the area is very simple here area you can simply write at any instant of time area can be written as half xy now just to get derivative of this so d upon dt d upon dt is simply half and this is x dy by dt and now y dx by dt okay so simple differentiation now you can put this let's say you can take this angle as theta and suppose this length is equal to l so x is equal to l cos theta and y is equal to l sin theta and what is dy by dt dy by dt is basically uh, this velocity, okay, this velocity is dy by dt and dy by dt is positive here. So dy by dt is this velocity and this velocity will be, this is your instantaneous center of rotation and from here, this distance is going to be L cos theta. So this velocity is omega L cos theta. This is along this y axis and this velocity which is along the x axis, uh, which is decreasing this x here. So this is, <clears throat> this is the center distance and this distance is your L sin theta. So this velocity is going to be omega L sin theta. Okay, so simply this velocity is omega L sin theta, omega multiplied by the distance. Okay, so now we are in a position to write this half. What is the value of x here? X is omega L sin theta. What is the value of d by by dt? So y is increasing here. So d by by dt is positive. It is omega L. Uh, I've written x here. X is, sorry. Mm. You have to be careful about this calculations part. So x is simply, uh, uh, x is equal to x is the length, x is L cos theta here. Okay, so L cos theta is x. And what is d by dt? d by dt is this velocity, this velocity along this y-axis. Okay, so this is our d by dt and this is omega L cos theta. And in value of x, there will be no omega. Okay, so x is simply l cos theta okay so now let's write y y is l sin theta distance is l sin theta and what is this dx upon dt dx upon dt is negative because x is decreasing so you have to put a minus minus omega l sin theta it is okay so now we have the value of da by dt so let's calculate further da by dt so da by dt this is you can take half omega l square common and in the bracket it will be cos square theta minus sin square theta cos square theta minus sin square theta will be simply cos 2 theta okay so this is your d by dt so this is the value of d by dt now what is the emf emf is simply b will be multiplied with this so half b omega l square cos 2 theta this is your emf so equation we need to make now will be so now the main part of this question is making the equation. So rate of heat generation, rate of heat generation on the resistance of uh, resistance of on the resistance of this rod. Okay, so only this rod has resistance. Other part of the circuit has negligible resistance. So we are going to neglect that. So rate of heat generation, and this is equal to the rate of loss in kinetic energy of rod. Okay, so now we have to write these terms mathematically. So mathematically, how to write uh, this thing, rate of heat generation. So rate of heat generation. So this thing is simply, and the EMF is squared divided by R resistance, and it is simply dK by dt. And dK by dt is negative, so I will put a negative sign. Okay, so first we have to write the kinetic energy. Okay, so first you have to write the kinetic energy. So that's the, thing here we have to write the kinetic energy so kinetic energy how to write so suppose if this is a rod like this this is the situation this is a rod like this and uh, this is your instantaneous center of rotation somewhere here so you can use this concept to find the kinetic energy of the rod so kinetic energy i can write half i about that instantaneous axial rotation into omega square simply okay so what is the moment of inertia about this axis which is passing through here? So for that, you can draw a line like this and you can see 
this complete thing is a rectangle okay this complete thing is rectangle so this is l and this is also l okay and obviously this is uh, l by 2 half of that l so this is l by 2 so you can use perpendicular axis term this distance is l by 2 so i about i o r so i about same as ml square by 12 and this distance is l by 2 so this is l by 2 square remember length of the rod is equal to l so both the diagonals are equal to l and half of that is l by 2 so from here you can find this equal to ml square by 3 so at any point of time what is the kinetic energy of the rod so kinetic energy of the rod you can simply write half i omega square i is ml square by 3 into omega square omega is the instantaneous angular speed so this is going to be 1 by 6 ml square omega square and what is this dk by dt here so just differentiate this so half uh, 1 by 6 ml square that is twice omega d omega by dt obviously omega is also decreasing with time okay so this is going to be 1 by 3 m l square omega d omega by dt okay so the dk by dt expression is ready now we have to be ready with the e square by r and just wait and let's see what mathematics is coming up so this is e square e square by r so it will be b square omega square l4 divided by 4 okay, this is our cos square theta cos square 2 theta rather and this is equal to this is a square by this is the rate of regeneration and decay by it is negative so let's put a negative sign here so 1 by 3 ml square omega d omega by dt okay so this is going to final equation to solve this question okay so 1 omega you can cancel here and l square and this is cancelled okay so let's uh, see how the calculation is going here. Now, uh, this is cos square 2 theta here. There is one problem time uh, time term, term of time is coming at dt. So we have to be see that uh, how this dt can be removed. So this dt can be removed. Uh, there is one omega here and you can write omega is some d theta by dt. Let us see what that d theta by dt denotes here. So simply you can see from this diagram, this theta is increasing, okay. So this theta is increasing. So d theta by dt is this positive omega, okay. So you can simply write d theta by dt as omega. So d theta by dt simply can be written as omega. So omega can be written as d theta by dt and from both the sides, uh, we will get rid of this dt, dt will be gone. So now I can write b square, L square by 4R and all the terms I'm writing here. So it is 3, M will be here. Okay. And uh, this is cos square 2 theta and omega can be written as d theta by dt. And only the thing remains here is d omega by dt. So dt is cancelled. And now you can make the differential equation like this. So d omega integration, this is minus of. Uh, Okay, so all these terms are constant. You can take it out. Cos is quite 2 theta d theta. Integration both the sides. So this is initially this and now it becomes this. And theta is initially 0 and finally it will become pi by 2. So it is a simple integration. Cos square 2 theta can be converted into that cos 4 theta. Okay, so now I'm going to write the answer directly from here. So this omega will come out as 3 pi b square l square divided by 16 ever so this is going to be final answer to this problem